All right, we have a no heating call here at a house we have not been to before. So let's see what they got and try to get them some heat. Okay, nice enough guy. We went up in the attic and looked at his green criterion furnace in the attic and it fired right up, so I don't know. Maybe there's a fan issue or something and it heats up. So he said both of them were out. So this is also an 80% in the, in the crawl space. Let's go over there and look at it. All right, it's an older frame here. And so I don't know what we've got and don't have. We're gonna have to get the meter out. Don't know if somebody's been messing with it. Transformer down there. And where these wires go, I do not see an inline fuse anywhere. Sure don't. So, let's start from the ground up and look for power. All right, so I dug that out and pulled this wire off the black, wire nut off the black, and it is dead. I've tried that in either position, so not sure if we got power right there. Maybe if that switch is bad or if the breaker's off, but let's start looking because we don't have power right here. All right, so I went in the house and yep, the breaker was actually off. So, not sure why. He said they were just trying everything they could. So we got into his draft. I mm, guess that igniter ain't good. Look at it. That would be my guess for this one. Blowing red, and the board is clicking. Yep, there it is. Too. It don't look good, but it's going. Now let's see if we get fan. That motor looks original.
trying to get up to speed. <laughs> All right, we looked at this little ream 80% furnace a couple days ago and uh, it needs a blower motor and and it's uh you know kind of older pretty nice younger couple that owns this and uh as you can see this is not one of those that's any fun to change the blower motor on the, the flues in the way all this got to come out boards mounted to it and it's no fun, so I think he he must have wanted to check a couple prices or something, but he, he called back and asked us to do the job. So let's get started and see if we can change it. This looks to be the original motor. So let's see what we can do. said these are not any fun to work on <clears throat> pretty much everything is in the way That don't break, I'm glad it did. Well, that was a lucky break. Or a lucky not break. Probably never been apart. <clears throat> I guess. It looks like it may slide under that. I'm not sure.
and screws on it everywhere else. Those right there might be 5 sixteenths. Nope. Sometimes these universal or flippable chucks, whatever you want to call them, are Sometimes they're a little bit fatter than others. And now and then they... It's a little bit more cantankerous to get them on to certain screws. Just like that. And then you have the same thing with these eight and ones. I remember when they first started with those, they were six and ones, and they were more and ones, more and ones. And now they're up to elevens. So, I guess eventually we'll be up to a 20 in one or something. I don't know that, I'm just talking to myself, you know, while we're doing this. And I don't have a regular nut driver, so I stuck my quarter inch chuck in one of these something in ones. I think this is an old Hillmore six in one, but I'm not sure. Well, that is a short screw. Look at that. That's not going to be real friendly to get back in. When it was coming out, I almost thought it had broken. Hmm. All right. It's rare to see the tan wire nuts from way back. They're real tapered and real universal. They'll replace the those old tan ones, if you got room for them, can replace the light blue, the orange, and the yellow. You can use them in the place of all of those. And uh they seem to be popular these days. I don't really buy them and use them. Here 
tell you what, this, uh, this design of theirs from back then, rings, is, uh, not what we would call really easily serviceable. Just to get the motor out, it's taking us Quite a minute or two, and I don't know where that daggum, daggum nut went. I didn't see it fall. Oh, it came all the way out here to the ground where it was quiet when it hit. So I didn't hear it. Now, we should be able to just unhook the thermostat wires. And get all this right off of here. Two wire is the only thing that has a common. off the two wire so it looks like they got four wire going up into the house which means you can't really upgrade the controls without having to pull a new wire and they've got the blue on cooling on the Y Obviously, because there is no yellow in the four wire option that they chose to use there. So this back in the day here probably has an ABS drain. Everybody that shopped at the Ream store back then would uh, would buy everything from there. Yep, and there's that little bitty black. ABS drain. Now, 20 to 30 minutes later, this thing should be ready to slide out. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to it loose. There it comes. And of course, they got this plumbing pipe. Look at this. Running right here off the ground right where we'd like to be sitting at, so we're having to reach rough on the lower back too after a few minutes so as i've said before some jobs are a little more trouble than others Nothing logically stopping us. I can see that these two connectors are going to be in the way. Let's 
time to slide by this end. hard to pull it evenly, top and bottom. Did I mention that I do not like rain? Or did I forget to communicate that? I didn't like them then, and I don't like them now. Tell you what, this blower wheel is so nasty. Whew. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get out of cleaning this thing. I think this is from, I can't remember. I looked on the outside units. It's either 92 or, it's pretty old. But, it was not in the budget the customer to replace it at this time. They have no heat. They're a nice young couple. He is a police officer. I always try to do what I can for everybody, but for policemen, teachers, firemen, the public servant type. We can we try to go the extra extra mile for them so here we are Boy, that's a trip. I got three quarter inch screws in each leg of this. Three in each one. And of course,
And I'm going to imagine that this is going to be a tough one. <laughs> Look at that. Well, we caught one break. It slid right out. That is one lucky break. Now, as I was saying, there's my other screw down there too, dead gummit. But look at this blower wheel. It is so nasty. Jeez. I don't see any way out of taking that out and I mean, it's so bad it'll be out of balance and cause problems real quick. And as much as I feel like this thing is not worth working on, I am here working on it. Right now. This thing, I don't know if you can see up inside the blades or not. Yeah, you can a little right there. It is absolutely going to have to go outside and visit the cleaner and the uh, water hose. Can't put that back in there. Another problem I'm going to have is our little universal. Look, these are screws. Actually bolted to the side of the motor. The motor's not going to have those screw holes in it. Although I wish it did. It's not going to have those in it. And the universal belly band is what we call them. Uh, motor band kit is not going to have the ability to line up with the way that, you know, there's no threaded uh, insert in this housing. So. This one's going to be a little bit of trouble. Let's go get this thing. Cleaned up and we'll see where we are. All right. So I thought we were going to catch a break and this bracket actually go on the Mars motor. I opened this Mars motor and I saw these two screw holes in the side. I said, oh man, this is actually going to work. And then I held these up here. I noticed they're a little bit out of line. So what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to put the screw in that one. And boy, that's going to be real close to the other hole. So if I do it this way, I don't know how much I want it sticking up. I like it better with it flat on the motor like that. It's still not. It's still into this. No matter what. So I'm going to mark these brackets and have to drill another hole in all four of them to get this to mount back on here. Our universal belly band does not even come close to 
reaching any of these and these are nothing but just sheet metal screws sticking into you know a fairly thick housing from those days so i guess it'll work i mean it held together all these years so i'm gonna get some drill bits or a drill bit mark that on all four of these Jeez. Is it really worth it? <laughs> so those holes there are just a little bit further apart than these. I don't see any others on here, so they're all... I'm, I, now, I'm just assuming. I better pull this thing out. I'm assuming there's four of these. All right, so there is four sets of these on the new motor. And I'm comparing it to this old one and I see the the bottom screw is screw hole is really close to the same distance here. So I'm just gonna use this as a measuring device and hold my finger against what I think that surface is which is the lowest point. I'm gonna come over here and make sure, yeah, that's that's really close. So we wanna use this lower screw hole right there in the motor. And then we wanna mark this one in the appropriate place. So I'm gonna put it on there I'm gonna put this on here like that with one screw. And then I'm gonna carefully look at that hole. Got a little bit of play there. And I'm gonna mark that in the appropriate spot and drill it. And I'm gonna repeat the same on all four of these and try to hurry up and salvage this repair. I tell you, time eats you up on these little things. All right, so you can see what I did is I put one screw in the bottom, moved it up there, and I put a scratch here. It's kind of close, and like I say, you, you got a little play there, but I put a scratch there, so I'm going to put my bit right above that scratch. I'm going to test fit this one, and if the screws go in it well and it tightens up, um, and I'm gonna use that as a template to drill the others. And I'm gonna get one fitting real good first and then and do the other three the same way. All right, so I used uh, 730 seconds bit. It was a nice new one that had never drilled a hole before and so I knew it'd go quick. And uh, Got it on there. It looks kind of straight. You got a little bit of a little bit of play here with this sheet metal, so floppy. So I think we'll be able to pull this off and just use this as a template and get them all four drilled, and then get it on there and get it back in. All right, so it looks like we're gonna be okay, and uh, gonna be able to get this back on. It looks like our height is. Not going to be much different than it was, so let's get the wheel back in here and get it back installed. Oh, this is a bad one here. factory had a four-speed motor but they had parked blue and red and they were using yellow for heat on this relay here you can see it yellow for heat and black for cool so I hooked 
black for cool, that's high. And I hooked their yellow on blue, which is medium. I capped off the red speed coming from the motor and just capped off these two that are parked. And if I'd have been thinking about it, I'd have just pulled them out, but uh, that's okay. Um, then on the new motor, the yellow is common. And on their board here, the white is common. So we hooked the the yellow to the white. And I'm gonna strap all this down and slide this thing back in here and get it going. All right. And then the last thing we're gonna do before we slide it in is we're gonna line this blower wheel up. And uh, as everybody that watches my stuff has probably already seen, I don't go for the center. I go to the center and then I go Let's see, look at that. It's already got shaft play with a new motor. I go a little bit away from the load so that, you know, the, the wear. So as this thing wears and kind of sinks down, it's slightly a little high to begin with. So I'm going to do that and tie it. All right, it. so I don't know how well it's going to show, but I've got it slightly towards the motor because the motor's on top when it's inside so you know as the motor bearings wear it'll kind of sink a little so that's uh that's how we're going to put it so we should be should be good to go now let's put it back together so this is not the fun part here to get it back in and as carson daly would say let the battle begin. I mean, it would be a lot easier if this plumbing pipe wasn't right in my way. break on that at least. And I even stopped right in the spot where the screws get in. And I remember it had these short stubby screws in it. Hopefully, they'll both go in and there we are. So the last thing we have to do when we're wiring it is find a decent place for the capacitor because it is not designed for a oval, which is what we have. It had a uh, round one in it. So, not going to be able to put that back in. I hate it, we had to take all this apart just to get the motor in and out. But back in those days, things were not quite as service friendly as they are today. Those pointed ones. So 
I've had short stubby ones in this electrical as well. These strain reliefs in certain areas can be really important. And this one, there's already a couple of ladders laying over there, and I don't know if anybody would be thoughtless enough to slide one across the top of the furnace and think that's a good storage space for it. Um, I have seen that before from homeowners and, you know, yard keepers, whatever, whoever does it. And they could very easily slide a ladder right across the top of the furnace and jerk the wire out of it, short it out, blow the breaker, act like they don't know what happened. Go ahead and leave and the people find out they got no air that night or no heat, whatever. So, when we do installs and repairs and stuff, just depends on where it's at as to how important or how vital in some cases I think the strain reliefs can be. I know you guys have seen a few of ours that might not have had them or we might not have added them, changed whatever. So I just kind of use my judgment and Right here, I can tell you, it's important to have it. Because like I say, there's already a couple of ladders laying over there. And I can just see one day somebody getting creative with their storage or whatever. slide one right across the top of the furnace and there you are. So, if you guys are wondering, since I quite often talk to the camera in here, Y'all are wondering if I talk to myself whenever I'm not filming. The answer is no. So, I'm just talking to you. And some of you like it, some of you don't. Obviously, you can put music on in the background, watch the videos, whatever you do. Just know that I really appreciate you watching them. I really do. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that we all watch each other's videos no matter what. Uh, you know, we all, we all watch uh, Zach's channel, the HVAC Shop Talk. That's, that's become quite a variety channel. So that's... Uh, let me get out of the way of this stupid hanger. That, uh, Zach has become a little bit of everything. So, most of us don't, don't ever miss any of his videos. We watch them all. You know, uh, and of course everybody watches Steve Lav. Uh, some of us are more interested and some of us are not. You know, a lot of his are plumbing, so we don't, Everybody doesn't watch all of them. They just look and see what it is and watch the ones they want to. Tell you what, man, he's he's the 
King of the Godfathers on YouTube. He's over a hundred thousand subs and still growing. So I watch all of his. And uh, we got some newcomers coming along. Um, part of that overtime crew is uh, uh, what's his name? Wild Bill. I can't remember Bill's name, but his uh, his channel is Curious HVAC Guy. There's quite a bit of videos popping up that he's doing. And uh, then there's Shannon. I wear my sunglasses at night. Let's not forget him. And if you're not if you're not watching him and not watching the Curious channel, you really should be. Shannon is uh, starting to post more and more videos, so I've been watching them all. His, I think, is just Shannon Knight, but I call him Shannon. I wear my sunglasses at night. If you look at his little avatar, his little logo on his YouTube channel, he's got his sunglasses on, so, you know, that's just somehow something I started doing, and a few others do it, too. Um, tried to talk Adam into making videos, but he just doesn't have time. That's uh, Adam, the A-team guy. He's part of that overtime crew as well. And he just doesn't have the time. He really doesn't. I, I used to rag him and tell him how he's just making excuses and all that. But after getting to know him a little bit and kind of becoming friends or YouTube friends, whatever, with him. I figured out he's he's telling the truth. He doesn't have any time. He's a family man. And then trying to trying to run a business, you know, he's a company owner, so it's uh it's understandable that he doesn't have time for it, but I don't know. I just I think it's worth it. I think uh I think more company owners should find time. Obviously, I don't get the time to do as much as I would like to on YouTube. Um, that's why I was trying to be involved in other ways and trying to, uh, you know, trying to sponsor other channels, trying to trying to do giveaways, trying to do whatever I could to just stir action and be part of things. And all of that just, some of it works out, some of it doesn't. So, you know. Back to trying to just make videos as much as I can, but I'll tell you the biggest thing about making these videos is the time to sit and edit, load them to YouTube, make sure to shorten them as much as you can, and cut out some of the boredom. And try to keep in mind that you're better off if everybody watches your whole video as far as the YouTube channel stuff goes, popularity, analytics, and so forth. And so a lot of time goes into that. And uh, hence that's the reason I kind of see Adam's point that he doesn't have time for it. Um, But forgot to put the other cooling wire under the yellow up there. The other piece of two wire. Tell you, this thing is really getting to my back, bending over this pipe because I can't scoot up close to the furnace. Let's 
see if everything's working. And uh, like I say, I hate to hate to be the run cap bandit, but I have to do something. Maybe I can mount it. There's some room right here. As long as the screws on the back side don't don't interfere with anything, yeah. I think we can get away with that. So we'll end up mounting it there. So let's see if we get heat here. Okay, and if any of you is wondering, I did mount the capacitor there. Look at those screws coming through, aren't gonna hurt anything. So let's do a test fire right quick before we put the door back on it and see if it fires up. There it goes. Okay. So let's hope we get ignition and hope we get fan. And, uh, give these people some heat. It's been running a few minutes, and I think we're going to be okay. So we're going to put the cover back on and collect our money and get out of here. We've got a few more today, so this one chewed up a little bit of time. But it's all back together. In 1992, I was right. I glanced at the outdoor unit. Well, it's coming back across and uh, right. got that back. So as I said, I was coming back across the yard and uh, and I glanced at the outdoor units again. They're both 1992. Say what you want about the old reams, but I don't like them, but these have certainly run for a long time. So there they are. Old Classic X 10 Sears. 1992. Well, sure they're both the same. Not the repairs we really want to make, but sometimes you have to. So they've got heat and we're on to the next one. Thanks for watching.